I made a little bit of a mistake in yesterday's video that was called, should we save this Nissan Frontier or is it gonna cost too much? And I never really said, are we saving it or is it gonna cost too much? I kind of just assumed that when I said $500, everybody would be like, yeah, fix it. So obviously we are fixing it and we're starting on that today. Um, if it would have cost too much more than that, then it would have been like a, a dump it scenario, but we're definitely finishing this thing up. What is going on guys? I am Watch JR going. Like I said today, we're gonna fix a bunch more stuff on this 2001 supercharged Nissan Frontier. I mean, you gotta throw that in there. Um, yesterday we fixed, I hope, a ton of stuff. We got the radio sorted out. It looks like we may still have just a small, this could be residual, honestly, uh, because this leak right there, that brand new puddle is that, that tiny little part right there. It looks like that was coming off the tow hook and the tow hook was absolutely soaked. And there's our engine oil leak. It's gotten just a hair bigger. So we need to get it up on a lift, figure out just where that engine oil leak is coming from and just double check that there's no power steering leak. I think we got the power steering figured out. We have not looked into that engine oil leak one bit. To do that, we are headed to O'Reilly's and over to German Motor Works so we can take a look at the alignment. And uh, it should also make it very easy to replace that uh, sway bar bushing that's completely toast in this thing. And just like that, we are here at the Car Ninjas with the Frontier and we've got some parts from O'Reilly's here. So first things first, we gotta fix that seat belt. And then second things first, we gotta get this thing up in the air and replace the sway bar bushing before we start aligning this thing. This is supposed to be both sides and it was, it was pretty cheap. Like I thought about 20 bucks. And these of course are just a few dollars and it comes with a ton of seat belt stops for you to replace them on a bunch of different cars. Tan interior, gray interior, different colors for every car. How these seat belt stops work is very easy. You just kind of match up each seat belt to the other side. So it looks like this needs to sit right about there. And then you just kind of, you can probably find the factory hole but you find somewhere right in there, put the seatbelt stop through, uh, it's got a little needle, and then you just snap the cap on. Well, this is one of the few times in life that I'm gonna say never ever buy this product. The Dorman 74358 should be discontinued. I don't even know how they're selling this. There are tons of reviews on these things on every auto parts store's website, and they're all like one star over and over and over. Uh, I think they must be faking reviews just to get the, somehow has a two star rating, even though if you scroll through them, every single review says defective, these are trash, you have to glue them into the seatbelt. Um, I've done this many times before, and you just open up the seatbelt stop, punch the little hole, you can see I made the little hole. It's got the little imprint of the claw where it grabs the seatbelt, but it just falls right off of this. So typically, these things should have a lip, and that lip locks into the pin. These just fall on and off. What are you supposed to do? Melt it onto the car with a torch? Or, uh, I, I mean, there's just no way to do it. Everyone says they've had to super glue these together. Yes, it comes with enough to do a bunch of seat belts, but this is trash. Discontinue the product. It simply doesn't work. And there are a million other reviews backing up the fact that it simply doesn't work. If I have to Google a video to see how it works and then find out it doesn't work, it's pretty upsetting. Well, apparently you're supposed to melt it onto the vehicle. So I used a soldering iron and now it's on there but I'm still sticking to, that's the worst design ever. What happened to the ones that just snap on? Please stop selling that product. Either way, we got the seatbelt stopper, checked off the list, and now we're onto these uh, sway bar bushings here. It says stab bar, uh, BU01006. That's our part number here, and they look right to me. So this should be the fastest install ever. Uh, it just has four 14s holding all this magic on, so we're just gonna go ahead and drop the brackets. and then we'll swap out the rubber underneath. That should be about how long it takes you to do sway bar bushings. Oh, they even fell apart on a Nissan Frontier. Look at that. That bushing was pretty toast right there. There's the rest of it. Couple second job. I wanted to make sure I had the new sway bar bushings installed before I did the alignment, just to make sure nothing changes. And there you have it, brand new bushings on both sides. I had to grab a screw jack to kind of lift the sway bar to make it easier to get those ones in because once you get those ones started, the sway bar kind of sits at an angle. So a little bit of pressure from the screw jack and we were good to go. 
We'll spin this thing out of here and we are ready to start checking out the alignment. All right, let's be honest. The alignment is barely off on this thing. I mean, it is, it's literally just a hair right there. But we're gonna go ahead and run Winto so we can get that nailed and that should knock this out. It turns out the driver's side of this is reverse thread. So I was rocking it back and forth and then we quickly found out that uh, you just have to go the wrong way on the outer. But it looks a little better now. Hopefully all the suspension is sorted out on this thing now. We got this as close as it's gonna get, which is basically zeros. I know the caster's off by a hair, but the reality is that's probably a bushing that's going bad, but it's not off by much. It's off by, you know, a couple tenths of a degree there. So it looks good. The tires are wearing well, and eventually down the road, it'll probably end up with those bushings. Or in a tree. Or, <laughs> or in a tree. And obviously we got the new sway bar bushings in there as well, lubricated, so hopefully they don't squeak. And it's time to get this thing down and take it for a test drive. Hopefully she's all sorted out now, except for the wheel speed sensors that should be here in two days. That seat belt stop makes all the difference in drivability. So let's take this thing out on the road and see if the alignment is any better. I think now it drives straight, but it might be good. Well, it looks like all that's left is the wheel speed sensor. It basically drives straight down the road there. There's a little bit of a crown, so I had to correct, but you know, I think it looks pretty good. What do you guys think? The only light we have left to deal with is the ABS light, and of course a windshield is on the way. So I think that checks every single box that we had to deal with when this thing came in. So not bad for basically two days of work. The wheel speed sensor should just be pull the wheels, pull out the bolt on each side that holds them in and run the new wires, plug them in. And hopefully all of a sudden there are zero lights on the dash, which should make this thing a very reliable driver for our family friend. And that also means we turn this thing around for just $500 in parts. And of course, those two days of work. So now that I test drove this thing around and it seems very solid to me, I'm headed back to German Motor Works to see if I can help those guys out with anything. And uh, then we'll be done for the day. We checked everything off today's list that needed to get done. And I did also find that little oil leak. It's the front main seal and that front main seal can wait until it gets a timing belt one of these days. It's not there yet. Um, as far as we know, it's changed around 100 and we'll change it again around 200. So 20,000 more miles and those seals can get swapped out. Huge thank you to the Car Ninja and German Motor Works here in Wichita for letting me use the alignment lift again. That is it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to head on over to shop watchchairgo.com for cool shirts just like this. And please like, share, subscribe, do whatever you want to do. And I will talk to you next time. A few of you have been asking for updates on the house shop situation. And I've been having a great time working back in the garage where things are simple and it's easy to reach everything. You don't have to walk like, uh, you know, 200 feet to get to the other side of the building to get to a toolbox. It's actually quite a bit easier to work in the garage here at home. But I was buying another place and this was an auction. The, I just wasn't in love with this house either though. Otherwise I would have simply won the auction. First, it was right beside the Air Force Base. The old shop of course was 15 foot away from trains, which were horrific. And now I wanna live so far out in the country that I never hear another noise in my life. Uh, and I was really worried about planes flying over beside the Air Force Base. When I say right beside, it was about a quarter mile away. If the house was a quarter mile from the fence, that puts about a half mile from the main runway, which means that they run their sorties and they take off and they just make a loop and they just come back. So I was quite a bit more worried about hearing the planes and also the shop, it had a 60 by 40 shop that was perfect but the ceiling was too low. It was only a 10 foot ceiling, which is, you know, the lifts will touch that, I think. They may not even fit, but I think they would touch that. So we would have had to somehow raise the ceiling of the, the building. And the house was 7,000 square foot. And I know that sounds like a lot, but it was actually dirt cheap. The thing is it was old and it was huge and the bills would have been outrageous to heat and cool that place. So um, I was bidding on it. It ended while we were driving the Corvettes and uh, I, I put in like almost the last bid. I bid it up to 400 and in the last few minutes, the house closed at 457 and then there's buyer's fees on top of that, which are 10%, so like 45,000 more dollars, which is, uh, it ended up being quite a bit, but still 7,000 square foot, a shop and five acres. Uh, but you know, it wasn't paved to the house. It just wasn't perfect. So I spent quite a bit of time waiting on that auction to end because it's a 45 day deal. And I was like, this is probably the one if it sells for the right price. And it just didn't sell for the right price. 
So that's where we're at. On the shop situation, we have a, uh, a new shop, I think. We're gonna show you something cool pretty soon. It'll be a nice place to work without having to build from scratch. So uh, that's the update on the house and shop situation. Uh, working here is great though, and I'll just do whatever it takes until I find the right place. Uh, I hate to just jump on some random place so we can move. And, and honestly, the moving process and building everything again is, is obviously gonna be a ton of work. So like I said, I'm really happy just working here. And that's the update on the shop house situation. Thank you.